Hi everyone, today I am with Jennifer Cody. My name is Lainey Gruber, and I am so excited to interview you today. Jennifer Cody is an Annie Award winning American leader, dancer, singer, actress, and a voice actress. She graduated from Fredonia in 1991. Her career began in the touring production of Gypsy immediately after graduating from college. She then began in her stage career on Broadway as a replacement in Cats in the role of Rumpelteaser. She was also seen in Grease, Beauty and the Beast, Susicle, You're in Town, Taboo, The Pajama Game, Sylvia, and so many more credits. She is also known for voicing Charlotte in the 2009 Disney animated feature film The Princess and the Frog. The role earned her an Annie Award for voice acting in a feature production. More Disney credits include Gravity Falls, Phineas and Ferb, and many more. Jen Cody is elected second vice president for AEA, Actors' Equity Association. And thank you so much for being here. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me. I'm excited. Um, so my first question for you is, what was your experience like at Fredonia? Um, it was great. Um, it was cold. <laughs> that was my, <laughs> my first thing I'll say is it was cold. Um, I was um, an acting major, a BFA acting major um, with a dance concentration. So um, we didn't have a musical theater uh, major at that point. So um, a lot of my time was spent um, in the acting studios. Uh, I got to do some really great productions there, most of the musicals. And um, I spent a lot of time in Dodds Hall. That's my <laughs> recollection of it, going back and forth across the, the street um, and always trying to find parking. In the dance studios? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and what are some of your fondest memories there? Uh, gosh. I, I did I, I did a production of The Miracle Worker, um, which was uh, really made me feel like I could do this for a living. Um, I played Helen Keller, and it was, uh, I think, the where the clouds parted, and I decided, like, oh, wow, I'm going to be an actress. Because um, I mean, we, all, we all doubt ourselves, especially when we're in that atmosphere where we're trying to learn, and I can't do it. I can't memorize these monologues, and I'm terrible. And your inner head. And it was the first time that I remember doing a part and not being in my head and not being aware that I wasn't that character. So I, I would say that was probably the huge, the huge moment at Fredonia. Definitely. That's amazing. Did it all just kind of click at once or was it um, combined with the classes? You know, I remember, here's crazy. I remember the audition and um, I, Tom Laughlin, who I know is not there anymore, but he was the director and we had to come in and he had hidden or dropped a pen and we had to find it. We were blindfolded. Wow. And I remember coming in and something clicked and I remembered the, oh, there's mats on the side of the rehearsal room. And I went and grabbed a mat and I started like skimming the floor with the mat to try to find the pencil or the pen. And uh, I found it. And that was like the first time that I, I don't know, it was like, it clicked and I wanted the part so bad. And uh, yeah, I remember finding that pencil and being like, ah, <laughs> success, I can be blind. <laughs> so exciting. <laughs> um, and how has your professional life shifted from what college Jen thought it would be? Oh, college Jen didn't know anything about <laughs> professional. I, oh gosh, you know, we are all, in your mind when you uh, want to do this for a living and all you see are um, the successes of like, now, I mean, I, I'm going to age myself, but we didn't have internet, right? We didn't have YouTube. So I never saw uh, people's bad auditions and I never saw bad self tapes and bad TikToks. I never saw any of that. I just saw like the Tony Awards. And, and so everything was just stars in my eyes and then you get there and you realize oh wow I'm I'm going to be working and it's never you're never going to get to a point where you're not working for the next job and that's like a re I think a lot of jobs once you get to a certain level you're like oh and now I'm going to do this and then I'll retire and I'll have my that's not as an actor like every so many years you transition into a different kind of acting and you look different and you sound different and you have to kind of keep reinventing yourself and I remember working with John Cullum, who is a multi-Tony Award winner, and he he was like 81, and he was re rehearsing for an audition. And I was like, what? You still have to 
audition? And he's like, it never ends, kid. So um, that I guess that's the reality of it is if you choose this profession, you are just always learning, always working. Mm -hmm. I think that's wonderful. Um, so what was your first professional gig? So my, my very first professional gig um, was I, I left the day after I graduated Fredonia. I would, flew to Scotts Bluff, Nebraska for a job that I had gotten, I believe at SETCs or NETCs, one of those theater conferences, um, to do a production of Nonsense. Um, wow. I took like two planes to get there. It was a bumpy ride, the second plane. I'd never been on a tiny little plane before. And we landed in a tornado. The artistic director picked me up with my suitcase and took me to a basement where we sat until the tornado went. <laughs> and I kept thinking, Gosh. I'm going to die before I ever get a chance to act. <laughs> um, so that was my first job, Nonsense in Scotts Bluff, Nebraska. Wow. And um, how did you find that audition? You said uh, SETCs? Yeah. So when I was a senior in college, we went to, I think, three theater conferences. We went to SETCs, NETCs, and Straw Hats, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they still have those. Yes. Um, and I, from those auditions, I got the nonsense job, uh, another job after that, and then uh, Gypsy, the, the tour of Gypsy. Yes. So I got all three of those at, at I believe, SETCs. Awesome. So yeah. like your experience with Cattle Calls and all of that um, sort of just goes through that timeline? Um, well, I, you know, I'm going to tell the story and everybody's <laughs> going to be like, that doesn't happen in real life. It really does. Um, I came to New York I, I, in doing um, a summer stock job right after the tour of Gypsy. Um, my professor, a, a professor of a college in New York was the director of the show and he couldn't teach for a little bit of time. And he said, would you be willing to go to this obscure college in uh, New York, he kept saying New York City. Strangely enough, it was Staten Island. But um, could you go there and teach for me for a month? And so I went, and while I was there with my one suitcase living in the, the college dorm, I went on an audition for um, the Broadway production of Guys and Dolls. It was for women 5'4 and up. I am 4'11, I'm very small, but I went anyway, huge cattle call. I gave an index card with my name and my phone number. That's all that was on the card. Um, I was immediately cut because I was far too short, um, but the casting director kept the card. And he was like, she'd be really good in cats because I was so petite. So he called the union at the time. I was not in the union. And he was like, oh, that's a shame. Couldn't find me. Um, cut to, he was walking down the street and I was doing a free benefit my name was on a poster and he saw my name and he was like, that's the name of the girl. He called the theater. They said, you have a phone call. It was from him. I went to the winter garden. I auditioned for cats the next day and I left on the road. So that's those cattle calls where everyone's like, nah, no one ever gets cast in cattle calls. You do. And I say, I always audition for everything. Cause you never know what, what it means. It, it always means another job. That's amazing. Yeah. You never know what yeah. connections you can make anywhere. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> um, so how is your experience in a Disney movie and, and on and Disney shows in general? Um, <laughs> I, so I had never, when I auditioned for Princess and the Frog, I had never done a voiceover before. Um, I have a quirky voice. And so people <laughs> had always said like, oh, you should do stuff. But, um, and I went in because I was doing a, an off-Broadway show at the time. And the character in that show was very similar to the character of Charlotte. And so the casting director was like, oh, we should bring this girl in. So I went in and I auditioned. And then, I don't know, like three months went by. And then they called again. They're like, hey, we're going to have Jennifer come back. And I was like, am I still up for that? Because, you know, usually when you audition for something, you know within at least two weeks if you have the job. So I went back in and, uh, and auditioned again. Again, a huge amount of time went by. They called again, we need Jen to come again. I ended up auditioning for it for almost the whole year, uh, thinking that I never had it. And I think the reality of me never thinking I could get it made me very confident and like, ah, I'm just gonna go in and sing for Disney. What's the big deal? Um, and I ended up, uh, yeah, on a Friday, after having auditioned so many times, uh, my agent got a call and he said, everyone else who's up for the role has a CD and Jen does not. 
can she go into a studio today and make a CD? So I took my, my audition book and I ran to like down the street to a recording studio and I recorded like four songs. Um, and they, we sent it digitally and, uh, they called and I got the part on Monday. So that's so exciting. I know it's crazy, right? <laughs> yeah. So doing a Disney film was like the best thing I've ever done in my life. It was thrilling and exciting and, um, you know, you don't see the, you work alone, so you don't ever see how it all comes together. And I went, uh, to, they, they brought me out to LA to watch the film alone in a, a little like viewing studio. And, um, I just sat and sobbed because <sighs> someone has taken your personality and drawn it and made it a thing. And that, and it'll always be that, right? Like that's something yeah. that I grew up watching Disney on Sunday nights at my grandmother's house, watching Disney shows and films and stuff. So um, yeah, it, it's probably been the most amazing thing I've ever done. Yeah, and that's, I guess, what helped you continue in the voiceover world. I know my yeah. next question was about like how you didn't intend to go into it. So what made you continue? Um, well, there's a lot of pluses to doing voiceovers and <laughs> that you, um, you don't have to wear makeup. You can put your hair in a ponytail. You can, um, you know, just show up and, and be in a studio. And it's most of the time, you know, there's different ways that they do voiceovers. A lot of voiceovers, you do the voice, you do uh, a scene, and then um, they will draw it or they will like make it work. Sometimes um, they have already drawn it and you have to take the words on the paper and make them fit. Um, lip dubbing, it's called, with the mouth of the character. That's really hard. And that's yeah. like, I, I say that's like math to me. <laughs> um, but it's exciting. I love, <laughs> and, and cartoons have come so far, you know, um, cartoons like American Dad and stuff that I like push the envelope. And um, it's no longer about uh, having a crazy voice and not having a character. It's more like really acting now mm -hmm. and, and being dry and dark. And uh, there's so many levels to being um, in cartoons now. So uh, I enjoy it. I have a blast. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so another question, what is your creative process like um, getting into whether it's a voice acting role, whether it's a musical theater role? Um, well, I think, or TV, they're all very different. Um, mm -hmm. I think that a voice role, I will spend a lot more time, like looking at the text, finding clues. Um, if a, if a character says something that I'm like, oh, is, is that a dialect? Like, do they have a dialect? Or reading all the stage directions to find out when that character might breathe and giggle and all that stuff. Um, it's more, more on the page, whereas in a theater job, you have the opportunity usually to rehearse and to try things and to um, engage with other actors. And therefore you find new things because they've given you something that you didn't expect. Um, voiceover world is very singular. You're by yourself most of the time. You don't usually have someone to work off of. So that th the process is completely different. TV is also a whole nother beast in that you usually, there's no, there's no um, rehearsing, you know, you have, you have your scene or you have your scenes, you get there, you block them, you do them. Um, and that to me, that medium is so much harder to me because there's no, um, there's no like, Hey, I want to just give this a try. There's no time. It's time is money. And so you just have to go on the set and be great and move on. And <laughs> so that's a little uh, more stressful, that process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, like, you can't make choices in the room. You have to know the choices beforehand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess that leads into my next question. What are you, some of your biggest obstacles when performing? Huh. Probably everyone's obstacles, right? You, I, I always, um, I definitely, I, I'm of the, the mindset that I make a lot of big choices and sometimes they are terrible big choices, but they're big. <laughs> um, but I think like everyone's obstacles, your own things that get in your head that you're like, oh, I don't know, I'm too short for that role. Or, you know, oh, I'm, I'm too old. Or um, I, I really can't sing that. Like you, you, things you put in your own mind, I think everybody has those, the demons, 
Mm -hmm. yeah if we if we all could just get rid of the demons we would be so much happier yeah i think fredonia really helps with that yeah (laughs) right Get, get rid of all that stuff because if someone had told me when i was your age um that rather than trying to be something that i saw already the idea of uniqueness and embracing all those things that make me crazy and weird and different because that is something no one else can do and I guess I never got that talk of don't be like a person A or person B because they're already that person. Mm-hmm. You, you'll you never be better than that because they already do that. Be you because nobody can be you like you. And I think I wish someone had said that like, you know, when I was in college. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what brought you to equity positions and representing actors? Um, So the union, uh, 52,000 members, um, is is a part of everything I do because uh, I work under the equity contracts in in different places. And as you, you know, you start to have such benefits from the union, you feel like, oh, I should give back. Um, And it's, you know, it's all voluntary. So I always say I already have my, my equity job takes about 40 hours a week and it's completely voluntary. Um, but it's, it's service. It's giving service. Um, just as if I would go, you know, work in a soup kitchen or, you know, deliver food, but it's, it, I'm giving service to a union that has protected me for so long. Um, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's stressful, especially in a time like this. <laughs> Yeah, a hundred percent. What are some of your responsibilities like right now and also what they were before COVID? Um, so my, uh, my title is second vice president, um, yeah. which means my focus uh, is always on protecting those people that do course work. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's harder now because big shows where they do employ a course aren't happening right now. Um, so I think my job now is to uh, keep trying to bring attention to that, that perhaps the chorus might be the last ones to come back right now after the pandemic. And, and uh, I, I did like a, an article about it to try to get it out. We're doing um, uh, an event on, um, on Stars in the House, which is this Facebook uh, YouTube group, um, to just try to keep the public informed that while some shows are coming back, some small, tiny shows, not everyone's back yet. And uh, I just, yeah, I think my my job now is to protect those people and bring uh, awareness to that. But, yeah. um, you know, always, my, my job as a union official is to get people work and make sure that it's safe. Those are, those are the two <laughs> things. That's awesome. Jobs and safety, yeah. <laughs> um, and how has Fredonia helped you grow into the person that you are today? Huh. Um, I think what was great about my experience at Fredonia is that um, it wasn't so defined as this is the track that you follow. Um, and they allowed me, I, I, uh, I was the president of Orcasis. Is Orcasis still a thing? Um, Dance company? Orcasis. I don't think so. No. I could be 100% wrong but I'm not super involved in the dance um, side of things. Yeah. So we had this, a a company called Orcasis. And so um, I got to teach dance classes and I got to choreograph so much while I was doing my BFA. And uh, I actually loved that it wasn't such a, um, uh, a set thing where you have to have this many things in music and this, I love that they, they let you kind of, I don't know if they still do, but it was, it was very much like finding your own BFA. Um, and I think it made me, uh, that's where I became a leader because they let me like become a teacher and, and lead organizations and stuff like that. And I, I don't know if I would have had that. I don't know if I had that coming into Fredonia, but I had it leaving. So yeah, I, I think that's it. wonderful, all the things that they have here. Like, I know right now I'm involved in the performing arts company here. Um, PAC. PAC, yes. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's like students teaching students theater. I think that's so, such a wonderful thing and an opportunity that wasn't presented before college. Yeah, and that kind of thing is, uh, you know, when you leave college, those 
talents that you have with creating your own theater and making sure everyone knows how to do everything like stage manage and, and yes. props and that like, I always say like the best actors are the smart actors. And I think Fredonia was really good about making us smart about all the different jobs and that no job was better than another job. And like, I think they're really good with that. And Definitely. I left knowing like how to pull up curtains and how to tape a floor and all those things that maybe I don't employ every day, but I know them. And so I respect the person that does that job. Mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely. Were you involved in PAC? I was, I did a couple PAC shows. <laughs> I can't remember. Um, what shows did I do in that black box? The Bartlett, I, yes. The Bartlett. <laughs> I can't remember, but I, you know, I went back um, a year ago more than that, to sing at the gala. Yes, I saw that video. And <laughs> I walked into, and I had not been in, you, Rockefeller Art Center didn't have the dance studios in it. It didn't have any of that stuff, right? So I kept thinking it was gonna be completely different. The minute I walked down those stairs into Bartlett, the smell was exactly the same. <laughs> and I was nervous that I didn't know my lines and that um, I was gonna get in trouble and I didn't have my props from my dorm. Like everything came flooding back with that smell and that it's the same exact smell. It's weird. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. And you were also in PAC in person. So it must've been very different to how it is now. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I guess so. How is it now? Um, right now, all of the e-board meetings and uh, general assembly meetings are online. Oh um, right now we have Our Town going on in person as well as Songs for a New World. Uh -huh. um, she Kills Monsters was also a, one of the productions uh, main stage and they was over Zoom. It was super great as well as Macbeth, which was oh, also um, on Zoom filmed. It was filmed. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, Good. everyone was, uh, every show has been seeing like different medium so songs right. for a new world is um we actually had jason robert brown come here and he oh. gave a workshop for us um oh my gosh i would have told him that this is <laughs> my i'm gonna write him right after this and say you were my alma mater yes That's so good <laughs> yeah but they um they're filming that now it's super yeah. exciting <laughs> yay oh my god that's so good i'm right now in um at western carolina university choreographing a show and um I keep telling them how lucky they are that, that <laughs> they're going to do a show in person um, because so many people can't. So I keep reminding them how lucky they are. <laughs> yes, that's Into the Woods, right? Yeah. How is that going? It's great. We, uh, we are at spring break. So tonight will be our last night before the little week off. And then we'll come back in tech and put it up. <laughs> that's so wonderful. And those are rehearsals in person, right? They are, but we are um, in a huge space and a lot of the, when it's not raining, which it is today, uh, we mm -hmm. rehearse outside and the production is actually gonna be done outside. So everyone's masked six feet of distance. We found creative ways um, to do some of the things that usually require touching. So it's been fun and a challenge. Yes, it is a good challenge. Um, and do you have any advice for performance majors who want to work their way up into the professional world? Well, I always say, be nice. Um, it's the difference between working and having a career in it, right? So anyone can work, anyone can get a job, um, but the community is very small. And so I always say, be nice, be kind, be someone you wanna invite to your house and have a party with, because <laughs> that, that's gonna have a long, you're gonna have a long career that way. Everyone's talented. Like at a certain point that you get to, everybody's talented. Talent becomes just the, oh, of course you have talent. Everyone has talent. Um, it's being yourself and being a good person, I think plays a lot into having a career in this business. Definitely. Yeah. Um, what is a valuable piece of advice that you've been given? Whether it's be here or something that you've kept with you throughout your journey. Huh, a valuable piece of advice besides being, being unique. <laughs> um, huh. I guess, I guess just to be fearless um, that in an audition setting, 
everyone behind the table wants you to have that job. They want to find who that person is. Instead of going in with the idea that, oh, you know, they're all mean people behind the table and they're, you know, they, they're not interested. They want you to be good. They're sitting behind that table going, oh, please, please be the person we can cast. Um, and that's also something I never, I never understood until I was on the other side of the table. Um, but yeah, I would say be fearless. You have nothing to lose. You are going to audition for hundreds, hundreds of jobs and they're going to mean, mean a lot more to you than they are to the people that you're auditioning for because they're going to see each time 250 people. They're not going to remember if you were terrible. They're not going to remember. They're just going to, if they didn't like you, they're just, you're not going to get on their list. So be big, be fearless, you know, because that only is going to make you a better performer. So mm -hmm. I would say be fearless. <laughs> yes. Um, who do you look up to the most or some, somebody that you come to mind? Um, hmm. Like uh, as an, as an actress, um, I mean, there's people who I like to work, like I want, like their work, mm -hmm. um, in musical theater, there was an actress long before me named Nancy Walker, who was four foot 11 and a peanut. And she was the, she originated a lot of roles that, um, I, I get to play because she was tiny. So I, I think that that, that's exciting to, I, I look up to everything that she's done. I watch on YouTube and everything. Um, I try to think modern wise. Um, I just like smart people. I find that I'm not drawn to people so much when I see them perform, but when I hear them talk or when I hear them do an interview and I'm like, oh yes, that was so fascinating and you're so smart. And I think I'm drawn to that now. And that might be age, I don't know. <laughs> um, but you know, I, I, all, of, all of my friends, all the people I see are so talented. So I, I see talent every day. Um, mm -hmm. I think I'm, yeah, I think smart people. Yes, definitely. <laughs> um, so what do you enjoy most about acting? Uh, I love it. I love that I get paid to do what I love to do. And I forget about that a lot, um, especially if I'm like doing a show that it's really hard or I don't feel appreciated or, but then I realize there is something to loving your job. Um, that that's, a, that's an honor, I think. Um, so that's one thing. I love that I can do this as a job. Um, I love creating. I love that there's no, no, that you can try something and be like, well, that didn't work this time, but it might work next time. Or, um, there's never an end to what we do. We finish a show and, and, even if you do that show again, it's going to be a completely different production and you're going to be with different people. So you're not going to make the same choices. And so I, I love that there's no, there's no finite of it. It's just like, Oh, we're going to, we're going to create and then that's done. And then we're going to go create over here. And this time we might do it on TV and this might time it might be just my voice in a booth. And this might like, I love that. I love that there's many options and it's not just, this is how you do the job. Definitely. <laughs> Um, and if you could change one thing about the artistic world, what would it be? Oh gosh. So many things. <laughs> um, I know I hate, I hate that our, our business always comes down to the dollar. Um, I think it has to, because we have to, it's an industry. It's an, you know, it's a, an industry that is built. Entertainment is built on money. Um, but it's really, uh, it's hard, especially at the level of commercial theater that I do. Um, it's hard that so much relies on money. And I wish we had more support um, from government for our arts organizations because in other countries they do. And uh, more creativeness gets done that isn't, it isn't bankable. So much as of what I do is like, well, this is a great show, but it's not bankable. We're not going to make money from it. So we're not going to do it. Um, so yeah, I wish that it didn't have so much money attached to it. Yeah, I agree. A lot of the shows, sometimes it's, they're expensive and people need to see them too. Yeah. That art needs to be shared. <laughs> art needs to 
needs to be shared. Help mm -hmm. us, help us, government. <laughs> <laughs> so my final question for you is, um, what are your plans for the future? I don't know. <laughs> um, like near future, um, you know, I'm going to hope, hopefully help our industry get back to work. Mm -hmm. um, that that's my first thing. Um, huh. I hope, I hope that I just can continue doing this. I keep saying, you know, to my agent, uh, I can't wait till I'm the old lady on a sitcom who just has the one line zingers like that. I can't wait till I age into that. Um, I don't, I don't see that ending the acting part of my, my job. Um, maybe, you know, helping run a theater and do this. Um, yeah, I think that's the great part about voiceovers too. It doesn't matter how old you get or, you know, you just do different things. Um, so hopefully to continue working and to uh, maybe help run a theater somewhere. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time today. And Thank you. And I'm so excited. I got to be on the, <laughs> the alumni thing. That's so exciting. Yes. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you. Um, do you have any final parting questions or words, anything? No, that's it. All that's right. It. Hey, Fredonia. Go, Fredonia. Hey, Fredonia. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Delaney.